Yes, you is. You're still stubborn as ever. And it's coming in the nice warm weather. Well, so maybe it is. You know, we get a lot of these uh, weather weather fronts that come in cold and hit the totality of the United States from the West Coast and go all the way down into Mexico. Be careful, all you folks out there in the Midwest. That'll that'll suck up a bunch of air up, nice hot, moist air from the subtropic area. So that'll bring you a lot of storm this year if it continues this way. Kind of anticipating that maybe it will. And that I'm also anticipating we may see a little bit more late snow, but we'll see here as this all works out. Word of caution for you all out there in the world. Mother Nature is. And we're going to have to come to terms with that, notwithstanding what they want to claim and blame against climate change. Now, remember, Michael Mann made climate change. Made it up, and we're, it's all part of that agenda we keep, I keep talking about, and I would hope people would just start addressing uh, in, in their locales. Again, become vocal local, as uh, William Roberts would always tell you, as his broadcast was named. And then there's uh, special ways that you have to do that. And everyone, some people don't like when I say that, but I don't know what to say. You're, you're in an environment you were placed, and you're going to have to understand what that is. And if you want to uh, be more than just a whiner, uh, be more a complainer perpetually, you, you're going to have to understand the things I've been suggesting, not filtered through what you say, <laughs> what you believe, but exactly what I'm saying and how it applies. But some of the stuff I can't explain, sometimes it's just an experiential thing that you'll re recognize. And then also, there's just an experience through the knowledge, and the knowledge is so long-term. It comes on as incrementally as, as the, the oppression is, your knowledge on how to deal with it. So sometimes I forget a bit of all the principles underlying what I'm talking about. And I don't even know if I could get to them all even I was to explain them that I know can be resolved for those of you that would step up and in into the whatever wrong. It doesn't matter how big it is. Just start to get practiced in stopping the wrongs around us, each one of us. And I, I only know as soon as you do that, on earnest and with something you really want to do, you'll you'll when you see. First point is is you don't try to think about what I'm talking about unless you have developed an intention, a real intention to go solve a problem. You cannot think outside without a, a focus on what I'm saying. If none of you, all the ones that are, you know, you have you see the problems in the world and you just want to complain, well, that's just being a complainer. Now, I'm really not talking to much of all y'all at all that way. I'm talking to those that see a problem and maybe they figure they, they, can, they want to solve it. A lot of times it's a private problem. Even the ones you don't understand that are facing us, as I talk about it, you'll make all these things up in your life and you'll realize that we're kind of overwhelmed. That's what they wanted you to, that's what they wanted. And then they didn't realize that they didn't, they would hope that you didn't figure out how to slowly extricate yourself. So when you choose, a, when you, I ask you to choose a wrong, you mean to mean debate wrong, you can look right around you. Everybody has this problem with driver's license. Everybody has the problem with um, taxes. Everybody has these problems. On and on, you know, the cops will kill you, any one of us. It's uh, overwhelming. I get that. But if you focus on one thing, I have, you have to focus on what? Make a list. Maybe I'll give a quick explanation. So I say this, some of this stuff, but it takes physical activity to do this and it takes a you need to settle everyone needs to settle down and really start to reponder what's up and refocus and maybe even get down to pen and pencil you know a computer unless you can do it on the computer on a notepad or something sit down for yourself if you've got problems you see in the world even if they're not your problems but you just don't like something make a list and i'm going to go to 10 but maybe that's too many as well i'm surprised at how little we're able to handle so when I start offering numbers, that's pretty arbitrary as well, and it can be overwhelming. And I'm learning more and more. i got to stop talking to people. Uh, I have to cut myself off when I'm responding in an email. I can go on and on about how what they what the, to set up the battlefield to explain the path. I could it could go on and on and on. I've under, I'm now understanding over after all these years. You know, it takes time for me to learn about y'all too. It's too much. And so I've got to let, take it a little bit slower. I don't do that on the broadcast. I just stream on through whatever I can, whatever subject matter there is, because I want you, I just want to pick on something that might pick up something that might interest anybody. So it's just a diverse discussion here. But when you get into describing how something goes on, I can get pretty detailed on any particular matter, but I find that it overwhelms everybody. And actually, in practice, it's not that overwhelming. It's hard to explain it 
without it becoming overwhelming. So I'm learning to cut back and cut back and cut back on what I explain to people till I can see whoever is, is interested is picking the initial information up. And some, most everybody picks it up pretty quick once we can focus on something. So I say, don't listen, don't try to decide about what you are and what you do and what you don't and criticize whatever your, yourself and uh, on this. You have to sit down and make a list of ten things. If there is ten things. If there's one particular thing, fine. I'm just for generalities. If you're looking, people seem to have a hard problem picking a choice, I suppose. There's, I'm sure anybody could pick ten things. I would actually say just pick the five things that really, really irk you. Put them down, write them down, even on a notepad and a computer, whatever, whatever makes it comfortable for you to work. Settle down and think about it. What are the five most important things in my life? I just, even whether I understand them or not, uh, conditions that I do not, I can't understand. The most important ones that you want to get in down, write it down, five of them. And then I want you to not think, not think about everything else, look at just the five, and I want you to make, break the list down to three. And this is a little bit of an exercise because you need to settle down. You're slowly settling down to be able to make that choice. And what's the most important thing when you finally want to get reengaged in the, in the society that demanded it of you? And when you didn't, you lose to whoever is doing it. And you finally realize that dynamic, whether I like it or not or whether you like it or not, that's what's going on. Whether you want to deny it or not, be the, you know, being a heretic in your own life, I, I don't know about all that. I, I can only encourage you to make this list. But reduce it to three. And even, I'll tell you, a lot of people have a lot of things they want to get done. They're tired of it. I get that. But practically, you're going to have to make the cho a choice to start. Take that list of three of the most important things that bug you, whether you understand, no matter what your status is before that question. And I, I say this so let's be less so esoteric about that. A lot of people understand either about taxes or driver's licenses. If you're in a position of paying taxes or have a driver's license, don't prejudice your thoughts about wanting to stop that condition. You don't know. I'll tell you, you do not know how to stop that condition. But it bugs you. So if that's important, whether you know how you're going to go about it now or not, put it on your list. And then you look at the list of three, and you say, of these three, what's the really the most important thing? When I start to factor in what I do know, my skills, what it, I perceive it might take to accomplish, and a lot of the bigger deals like taxes and, and driver's license will take a lot longer. I just put that up front so you understand there's a lot more, a lot more prep work because the, the state, the government is resistant to not getting their stuff, their, their revenue and their control. And uh, there's a certain ways to have to approach all that. However, something maybe even a little minor. You look at Look at what your list is of three. Of those, and taking in your knowledge of those subject matter areas, you p find within those three the one you have at least the most information on and, the, and, and still the compelling interest to, to adjust. And then you have to decide that's the one thing. You started with ten or five. You got on to three. Now you've made one. Now you have that list and you save that list because that becomes your your next, your stepping stones to do the bigger other things. And sometimes, as I've been talking to some emailers or uh, writing back to, and apparently I might have a problem. Uh, I've been sending emails and they've been coming back. No, they're not getting out. So I've got a, we got a new problem to develop, developing. But at any rate, uh, we're, I'm still I'm trying to be on all that. But the you may find that depending on your the, the things in your list, you may or may not integrate them into a. a, a more and more stepping into how you solve problems for you. And and so that, that all depends on what those subject matter areas. Okay, less esoteric. If you have a property question, let's say a taxation question, and it's going to be a little bit to go work that through, but you just make the record to show that depending on your on your holding, on what you possess exclusive to the government, will depend on what how long it will take to get them to see that, or you have to expose them for the criminals they've been. And that just takes some letters and communication and knowledge, heavily not heavy knowledge on your part. Uh, let's say you also want, have a, a driving matter. Well, if you do your land rights first and you get those established, that'll you have the right of ingress and egress. That's a a pertinent property and right uh, relative to the property. So you now start moving in the direction of going to your driver's license. Let's say you have also uh, you want to do production type things, growing stuff, and there's a, a prohibition. I'm not saying, and listen, you gotta listen to care. I'm not saying to start growing. You set up the record if it's a, whatever you want to grow is against, 
uh, there's laws against it. You you have to make the records to defeat that law, notwithstanding its existence. And there's ways that you have to do it. It will depend on how much resistance you get. It will depend on how how much you have to do and where you may have to go to resolve that. But if you start in property, you can get it to drive ingress and egress. Now that's it's a natural progression out from coming and going on your property, which is an appurtenant right that wasn't supposed to be re- it can't be regulated actually when you get to it. And let's say you want to grow stuff on your land. So you're, you're starting with a, like a, a, your right, your property and rights is like your home. They call it a home, but that's a tax home. I'm talking about it's, it's your safe space, if you will. The thing that the government doesn't want to be a safe space. But if you drop your, your pebble in that ocean, the ripples go out and the ripples are these appurtenant rights that you can build from. So that you can see a natural progression from a property right. If it's just the one thing, Maybe you're not. You're upset by vaccines now, or you're upset by a 5G or smart meters. Those are a different approached a little bit differently, and uh, those again are mostly administrative, and those are the, probably the least, the least potentially dangerous as well. So, as I say, get down to your last three or three, and then make the determination on on how much you have to risk and what you know, and uh, and if you know nothing, just be a, honest to it. You, you'll learn what you have to do eventually. I mean, it comes pretty quickly, actually, when you get focused on the right path. Instead of going through all your ideas of what you've been told on the Internet and what people will tell you, the main thing you need to do is take the lead of people you trust and then just take that as a lead. As I tell you, I'm a pathfinder. I'll find you the path. You have to take the path. I'll even give you a bit, most of the time, what you're going to be anticipating when you see for markers for yourself. But you're going to have to take that path. That's much easier than I had it, where I had no clue, and I had to kind of figure it all out. And so this is the kind of, in my mind, this is the day I can offer things to people that maybe you didn't think of in ways that have not ever been done. And so I tell you about the evolutionary engagement. It's not ever done. You're not doing it just for the sake of it's never been done before, or very rarely anymore. You're doing it because when you read in the codes and the rules and the things that that occupier is holding against you, you learn how to communicate with it. It, you find out it had the power that it was claiming. And so this is a slow process of reintegrating our mind. We are not, most of us, and it may sound like an insult, I'm not insulting anybody, it's just a fact. You're not you're not capable or prepared right now. You might think you are, but, but you're not. And I say that without any arrogance or judgment. It's strictly when I got into this, it, it, how you respond to this thing is wholly different than I've ever seen anybody talk about in all the things that have happened, and I'm talking since the early 90s now, information that's, oh, I've been watching all this time and learning and researching and doing my own stuff and and working through the experiences of dealing with the, the government that doesn't want you to, you know, they're really not there to serve you, they serve itself. And so we all know that. I don't even want to get down that. We all know that. So my question is, are you, do you, here, here, this is the mission. Do you want to extricate yourself? And you're going to have to claw out one knee, one hand, one grip at a time out of the stinking abyss, are you willing to take that on? If you are, choose one path to go out at the moment. And then, and then once you've chosen what you want to do, what you want to fix, then I my things will start making more sense, I'm sure. I, I just can't. I'm thinking, I can't imagine when you have something finally to fix on. Because if you don't, your mind, it flits around a lot. It bounces around. It wants to... You take on a condemnation. You take on a. You take on inferiority. You take on judgment that it's not really there, and it it, it just works in your mind. It becomes this mental chaos that's partly been built into us, and partly because we have we. That should tell you again. Settling down, you'll start to realize you don't have the foundation. When you start bouncing around like that, you don't have a foundation. And I say that. I'm not saying this that I didn't and don't do it either. I do this, I use these tools that I don't really talk too much about. I guess I'm talking about them now. Uh, when you start bouncing around, it means that you don't really know. And that's an honesty thing. You need to be honest with yourself and say, oh, I really, I'm bouncing around. I don't know where the answer is. But I'm going to fix this, and so I've got to go find out what that answer is. And, and I've got to be open to where the path would take me as I develop it, as it develops and before me as I develop it for myself. And that's what kind of made, if, if there's a difference I do, if there's something that people who do this uh, and, and work start working, apply what I'm saying, do different. It has to be that you're open to where the path will take you, and you don't put your prejudice of what you thought you knew ahead of it. And that's a critical thing. It's just being honest with your, your limitations. 
you know, I don't have a problem with being limited. I, in fact, that becomes almost the, that's the reason for being in a way to fix that, that, that limitation in me. As I tell you periodically, there's things that I've read that I didn't really know how they applied until finally something came in experience that said, you're going to have to focus on this because you didn't understand it. Your mind starts bouncing all over the place. You start doing, you think you know, you're writing stuff that don't matter. You're doing the wrong actions to get you nowhere. And you got to step back and say, well, if, if I'm not on a direction, accomplishing a wrong, a, writing a wrong that you know you have to fix, it means you don't know about it. You need to learn a little bit more. You know, by following that, I don't put any pressure on, for myself. I don't put pressure on myself for not knowing. The pressure is if I don't know and keep acting wrongly. And so, you write your list, read it down to one thing. Make the decision to engage it. Don't make an excuse. Don't, don't, don't put any prejudice of whether even if you believe in what I'm saying. Just find that wrong you want to make right. You have to commit to that thing that you really want to fix. And then you start, you'll hear as I talk that all these things have threads of consistent application. You'll hear things that may make sense to you once you've committed that I talk about through all these tabs during the, during the broadcast and the side issues and the side experiences. You'll start to hear things that will incorporate in directions you can take if I never talk to you directly in order to we walk, we walk you through what you have to understand. And uh, I've noticed that we just aren't prepared to deal with this thing generally. Well, we can be prepared. And again, it gets to an interesting point. The problem that you're trying to solve ends up being a different problem than what you started out to be. And you're going to, it'll be what you find out was why you were whining and complaining. But now as you move along, you'll see the target clearer and clearer. And as we see the target clearer and clearer, your foundation puts the persistence and the direction more solidly under your feet, doesn't it? And you just, in, then you're convicted in your own actions beyond the ignorance that you had in the past. In other words, you don't start from the past, you start today. You, you kind of, for, I know we can't forget the past, but you forget what you thought you knew when you commit to the thing that you want to make right. And you work from the perspective of making it right. It will dictate. That thing will dictate how you will, what you need to know, and and the right thing you need to know. And the actions you take will will guide you on how whether you are on point or not. In other words, let's say I write a letter and I get a response. And I I got a. This is hard to discuss. Not that it's hard. It's uh, you can't experience it until you see it. Let's say I have a knowledge base and. And I write a letter to an official, and they respond in a particular way that doesn't solve the problem, but it continues it. I realized there I did something wrong, because what I should have done should have stopped the problem. And then I look at what the response was, and I find the direction they took, the official. And I go learn about that direction they took, and then I write a subsequent letter. And, and not just that direction, but I look at the other what they call, of evasions, essentially. You learn about those, and you, the next letter that follows tries to bring all those other evasions and the one they had and catches the official in the problem. So this is a little bit of a process. So you, even if I make a mistake and I don't lock it down, it means I didn't, I didn't know that trick, if you will. I go learn about that trick, and I go learn about a few around them because there's usually groups of tricks that they try to pull on you. Uh, and you, and you foreclose those in the next letter. And this has nothing to do with how much you know about history and the law and the constitutions or anything else. You're dealing with corralling a, a, a criminal, essentially, under the color of, of authority. And you learn, you'll learn as you go how to better do that. You, know, you won't know what I'm talking about or how to do that if you just complain and whine and agitate amongst yourselves. Or, on the other hand, just give up. I mean, that's not going to do anything. I don't, I don't get that, that idea. If you have any any thought in you about your own self, I mean, I don't understand giving up at all when they've got people that are coming to take your life away eventually. I guess you can hunker down. I guess you could hope that they, they don't see you just like any other trying to uh, any other creature in, in the world that just doesn't want to be eaten by some predator. Or you can stand up and act like men and women and say, I'm not going to, the predators are mine to control, and, and they don't have that right to do that. They don't even have that right to cause me to hunker down. I mean, that was really my insult to me. I said, why, why do these people even think they could do that? I don't forget the legality of it all or the law of violation. 
What do these people come to? We're supposed to be in this country that's not supposed to do that. What do these people come from that they do that? So it really wasn't even an issue in legal or law. It has to do with people not mistreating us, each other, and when in a place that that's not really supposed to happen, and it continues to happen because there's a presumption against that if you don't stand up for yourself. And I don't have an answer other than that. You have to stand up for yourself. Complaining about it won't do it. But maybe, um, I don't want to mention too much about it, but it was someone who found out that the smart me a county who professed to the people it was going to go against smart meters. And it had a lawsuit that it did to stop smart meters. And I looked at the lawsuit, just just some of the summaries of what was being said, and I said, they're going the wrong direction. That's going to be a failure. And the only thing that county can do, even though it's trying to promote that it's working for the people, is it's going to end up with the utility commission's decision. This was over a year ago. I just got the I just got the uh, an email from somebody complaining that it, the county threw everybody under the bus. So I looked at the at the order that was there that they agreed to, and it was simply the latest utility commission decision. Well, guess what? That utility commission decision was reduced in the meantime of the lawsuit by another direction that a colleague of mine had taken under if I can say my mentorship, to write a particular type of letter that caused the Utility Commission to move from a much more expensive extension encro encroachment to a lesser one. And, and you have to understand that's a win, but it's still not fixing the problem. That's how the amoeba works. It'll keep taking holding what it can. You have to be there to, to assert the where they continue to not be able to hold correctly. And so I offered to the one that sent me the email, that that will that a letter has to go out after the county failed, which is predictable, folks. This is what I'm saying. You don't have to get all wrapped up. The government's going to fail against itself. Again, it's an agency of the government. How is it going to go against the Utility Commission's decision, which has exclusive right to do these dec decisions? And you say, well, if they have the right exclusive right, what am I going to do? Well, because they have administrative things they have to do under law. That's why you get to go after it. And there's one exclusion, one savings clause in the administrative procedures for your underlying rights that they have to make regard for. And if you don't cite that code and you don't write a letter of objection, they aren't held to have to do that. It's pretty simple. Now, I suggested to this emailer, you need to write the letter I told you to write back in November when we first found out, actually it was in October, that the county was going to write their suit and it was going to fail. And I said, so it's still time. You can still write it now. Now you know that the county's issue took you a year to find out, or six months to find, eight months to find out that the, the government's position wasn't going to aid anybody. So, in, so again, there, there's a headstrongness, a stubbornness against doing what I say. But what I say will turn out, not because I'm all-knowing, it's that I know how this thing seems to work. Do I know all how it works? No, I'm not saying that. I know enough, at least in the first two or three steps, how it's supposed to work, that when you see that, you'll address that. You'll address the one thing that that administrative body was supposed to do that they didn't, and, they, and how to tell them, how to show them that they violated you, and what to say. You say, you open that door of violation. Not your opinion on how the Constitution works. Not your opinion on uh, that you've been wronged or that 5G does certain things based on these smart meters or all the health risks. You attack them on their ability, uh, their inability to follow the code referencing your savings provisions that are there. And as I say that, uh, what are the savings provisions against what? It's against the institution of alternative dispute resolution. What I tell you about. They keep subverting your laws through this alternative adjunct process. Within the administrative process, there's a secondary process that gets to throw it all out. What you all know that have been in doing any research is the Hegelian dialectic. It's, it's just a method, folks. It's just, it's just a little part of it. They get you focused on this little pe this little crumb that makes you, you think you're all knowing now, and you don't address what goes on. At any rate, so, folks, there's a, you have to choose Listen in behind the woodshed. And boy, I'm way past this, aren't I? Uh, forgot all about it. BTW, this is the past cast, recast, podcast, broadcast, whatever this is. You hear me later in the future. Uh, BTW RLM 320 is this, uh, where you can hopefully put that in in a search engine and you'll get the links I eventually get to here. Uh, that 
if you want to read more on the topics I'm, I'm showing you, just to see where I went, see how you see, so you can go read the text. Within the text, I find clues. The clues are the path, are part of the pathway, delineating the plat pathway. Here, right now, I've just been talking about methodologies on essentially some things that I, I see as uh, obstructions to I see going on between in people. And I don't even know what I'm afraid to talk a little bit about it because they get mis, misinterpreted. I don't don't mean to sound judgmental at all. It's just a condition that goes on. You get back to the point of making a decision. You have to make a decision to do something. I, I would li I can imagine what I sound like. It's hard enough to keep following me with without a position. I mean, with a position, let alone if you have nothing to fix on. Then if you get in your mind by, well, what am I, what are you talking, what am I supposed to do? Oh, that gets, then you get in your prejudices about the system, what you think is and all that. You're going to talk yourself out of doing anything or delay the, anything you might want to do. And I, I can't, I, I can't come up with all the little possibilities. I don't know what really sticks in people's minds to fix. I mean, that's just the world. It's just everything that's out there. That's what makes this place what it is, but that's also the exploitation points. So it, it kind of does take all of us. Everyone just kind of not liking something that's a substantial thing not to like, not not these, not the frivolous things, and or important things that are approached in my mind if I was in a, analyzing them frivolously. And uh, like, and I, I gotta hesitate. I can't talk too much about some things sometimes, but I just wrote a very important paper, and we and it got it got served and delivered. And I have to take an assumption, of, uh, like uh, maybe a presumption that the people that are in law and those at the highest levels of law understand law to some point. And so that becomes a tightrope. How much do these people know? How much are they knowing that they know that they're now evading? And how much of it do they not know? And for me, with the subject matter I talk about or that I'm involved with my colleagues, it's like obscure. The subject matter we talk about is obscured to most people except down at the property rights level down at the contract level, down at the basics of grant level. Who the heck understands mining law? Well, it doesn't matter that a bunch of dumb miners made it. It doesn't matter that it was made by the people people characterize as being the dumbest hicks in the world. But that's all it is. It's just this basic law that we end up finding out actually disposes land. What, what, what's the land disposal? People have no concept of this stuff. This is obscure stuff for most people. I get that. But inside this are the principles of how the United States of America is different and how you can defeat everybody. I can't. So far, we haven't been able to, to stop. No one can stop what we can present to the point that everybody doesn't present what has to be done. And we have an opportunity to go to a very important place and put the test to those that know law. And at that point, I have to write not as these kid, these people are kindergartens, gardeners. I have to write as if I they know law to some level. And so there's a tightrope about what you're going to say and what you don't when you get into this condition. And we shouldn't be at this condition, but when you find out that you are, you can't go in the world with your head in the sand anymore, given that uh, that was for us to keep better for ourselves than what we have been gave. Remember, Franklin said that right at the steps. We gave you a republic if you could keep it. People don't even understand the republic they gave them. And we're making it up today because we're so removed from the instant, the origin, originations of it. But, but again, getting back through very narrow pathways, in particular property, the thing that was so different in this country as it was established in, than everybody else anywhere in other times, that the peons could finally get land as against the, the sovereign, if you will. These are all in quote. these words are in terms of in quotes if you know how to put them there. This was different, that the sovereign could not actually invade the land within the sovereign's territory because the sovereign wasn't actually sovereign. For as much as you'll hear the sovereign is sovereign, it really isn't. Not relative to property. And that's the big distinction. When you start to get that, you start to look at this thing and reduce it down to these property things and whether or not an official looking costume can breach that and by what authority then you start to understand how to protect yourself a lot better. Now, there's going to be another problem, and I don't know what to say about it because we're in the brink of exposing something. Again, that's why I can't talk too much. It's on the, it's in the, it's in the works. All this stuff gets in the works, but they wouldn't be in the works. We wouldn't be in an opportunity that we have just seen open up for us. Uh, 
those of us in Jefferson Mining District and what I what I do within that district, we wouldn't have been able to take the opportunity. Because I told you, I said, listen, here it is. Here's an opportunity. Are you going to take it? And at the time, I told you a couple of weeks ago, I was looking at backing out of the condition. We, I felt a bit we missed the opportunity. And then the voice comes in and says, no, here's, the, here's now the opportunity. Will you take it? And the decision was, again, do I, is it important enough to put on my list at the top of everything else and learn what the opportunity, I didn't even know what the opportunity was. I don't even know if I still figured it out. But we, I put my mind specifically on that. All right, so I made that decision here just a couple of weeks ago. So if you don't think I make decisions about what's the most important priority to go after, the wrong I want to make right. It, it moved everything else off the table, and that became the most important. And I applied everything I know today to that project to expose how this thing that we call this country, this government, the instrumentalities in it have missed it so bad that I can show you, as I explained, I can show that the decisions are so inconsistent from one month to the next. Shows, ex, kind of spoke to me as the opportunity that I was, I had to expose if I made it a priority, and if I committed to it. So I'm trying to explain how you stop sitting on that fence or making the excuses or arguing with yourself or arguing with others or feeling bad that you're not in jumping in on something. I'm trying to show you how you get to make the decision, and you have to make that decision, otherwise you're really wasting your time. If you're not going to ever pick something in the in now, and I think there's enough now, so I don't know why you couldn't pick something that you don't like that you need to fix, that... If you can't make that decision now, I don't know what what to say. But if you're even in the future, you can't make it now. How are you going to make it in the future when there's so much to fix? If you can't make that decision, then what I'm talking about is really beyond. It's just outside of anything you'll ever, well, it might sound interesting, but it's outside of anything that will ever become useful. And you'll still be one of those making the whimpering, whining sounds and the arguments and, and maybe even professing how much you know that you actually don't and why? Because it's different than we're told. It's, and you'll, over know, you'll, not, you'll only know that when you engage it. And I, I guess another example is like fighting in armor. I, it, I know it makes me made up stuff. You get in armor. You build, I built armor for seven or so years. Medieval armor for an organization that's a you, entertainment organization. Well, you get in, you get in that armor, and you start fighting with people, and that's no joke. You can get hurt. You don't die. But you can get hurt. I can tell you, thought, my thoughts about getting in that armor and fighting were a whole lot different than what happens when you get into fighting. And fighting in quotes again. In dealing with someone who wants to hurt you. And in my case, in the, and then choosing the weapon style. There's a whole array of things that I'm still going through today. Not fighting in armor, but in and doing this kind of thing. Righting the wrong. That I keep reviving, That experience keeps bringing me up. What weapon are you going to do walking into this battle? What's the terrain of the battle? Who are you actually up against? What uh, pre pre uh, pre setting up some planned moves in order to be ready for a, an, a, an attack or a counter? Well, it's an interesting example I can correlate. That's why I call we, our lives are like in a war, we, and we're battling this war. And then I got to the point where I, something I would have never understood in fighting that just became me. It became my expression in how I was dealing with people who were aggressing me in a physical form, but not in a necessarily in a deadly way although you can get really hurt you really can get hurt and that was I found out there's something inside of us a spirit that kicks in you don't think about it and I wasn't it got to the point where my choosing again you, you're, you just look at your capacity you're honest with what you can and can't do I'm not the biggest guy in the world but I'm not the smallest I'm not no, no longer the the acrobat I might have been, the gym, gymnast, although there's a bit of that motion thought in my mind on how this thing works. But I got into engaging someone, wanted, physically engaging somebody on a repetitious level uh, who wanted to aggress against me, beat me in the head with a, with a, with a piece of rattan or a stick me in the face with a, a glaive. And I'm standing there with two sticks. I didn't even have a shield as I chose two sticks over a shield because I was more mobile in my mind and my, and my foot. Now, when I started to actually engage this, I found out I can best a whole lot more than one at a time. Something comes up inside you in the doing of this that you cannot predict. I had no idea this would come up. 
And it isn't even a thought. And, you know, it kind of it, it gets like into more esoteric things. In doing a mo if you consider it being real, that you're actually having to kill people here, even in the practice which mimics the, the action, it became a dance. You start to dance in this vile thing called killing for war. And that came from inside a place I could never think about. All of a sudden, I'm doing stuff. I, I'm, watch, I'm watching my kind of almost, almost out of body. It's like I'm looking at my eyes through the helmet. And what, are these guys, what is this guy doing? It's called, it was me I'm looking at. Going through the mowing people down with, with the skills that I just showed up. And this is the kind of evolutionary engagement that goes on. You'll never understand. You won't experience the dance in your engagement that isn't a fight. No, I wasn't the best fighter, and I was never. Well, part of that scale was if when you're the best fighter and you dedicate your time, you become king. I never became king. I could care less about even becoming a knight. I just enjoyed the, the, the people. I enjoyed the, uh, the craft of making the, the art, if you will. The good art and craft, not the not the one they've turned to us in making armor. It's really like art. It's also medieval safety equipment making. But anyway, I learned how to do that. I learned how to, you know, we are an artist inside ourselves. But then we get into using our the tools that we make, and getting in and practicing a bit. I didn't even put that much time into it. There comes a point when you come out. You come out, and it's not a discussion. And you find out you're so much more formidable when you break through and you stop your mental interference. And it really, it was really, it's still to this day quite amazing to watch how your body, in this case I'm, I'm, I'm addressing aggressors or I might even been the aggressor in, depending on the, on the scenario. But to not just be engaging one at all, I'm, I'm engaging up to 10, 15 people at a time. And you say, you say that, how can that happen? I don't know how, it could, I couldn't have told you it could have happened, but there's certain things that you start figuring in a system, in responses that people do, and you start picking up, somehow you start picking up on their habits, and you exploit them in real time. And so this is not, this is a, like I said, it becomes a dance, it's not treachery. I know we don't like, I don't like doing it, but it's a dance. You dance with the thing that you're aggressing, it's not work. It's part of what that thing is, says. If you get into something you enjoy, it's not a job. And if you can put yourself in a mindset that allows that, to get you closer to that. But within you is more things that only come out when you start applying yourself. It won't happen until you make the decision. The decision to commit, the decision to practice, the decision to put you in, in practicing positions without jeopardy, and then at the time when it's when you pull most of it together and you have to respond, you do. You do properly. Much more properly than if you hadn't, see? And then you get to that point when you're just almost, like I said, it felt like it was almost outside of my body, although it was inside my helmet. I'm looking at this body, me, or this, this guy, just mowing through people. I didn't never understand how that actually could happen. Because I didn't practice that much. But there's certain things you start to understand in the engagements that I can tell you, I translate right on over into what I tell you to do when we see the world, the authorita, the authorities that are not, is particularly the United States of America, that have gotten in our face and causing all the trouble that we have and causing the harm we see, and we sit back really only to complain about it. When I'm looking at this whole thing over my experience now relative to the training and engagement and saying, well, there's a way we can hit this, and it's not going to be by our... It, uh, prejudices about what we thought or our complaints about it. And so it went a whole lot longer here. I just, like I said, I, get, I have all this stuff to talk about otherwise, but sometimes I get right before the broadcast and it impresses me to say something new. So I go with that part too. Uh, but this, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm a lot troubled with what I see uh, the society doing. If, and I only respond to this one thing because I hear complaints. I guess my question is, is that complaint earnest or is it just you wanting to hear hear your complaint and at that point I don't even know what to say I don't even know why there would be any time spent listening to it and a lot of times I, I don't I think that's what I, I don't listen to a lot I don't get out and listen to a lot of people I'm too busy in some regard to address these things these opportunities that were never I would never see them if I hadn't been engaged Stepping ahead of the future, if you will, watching what we do behind the scenes 
developing in the MSM news. It's pretty interesting. Now, do we have a direct connection on that psyche? No, but we have an indirect indirect direction that we're predating before it happens. That's the kind of thing I'm talking That's the dance. You just do your thing. And you do it in a very foundational and important way. And you, uh, it's kind of this odd thing. You'll, and you kind of throw this down anyway, but it's interesting that it doesn't happen. You really don't get credit for that. You're, you're speaking like to the, to the void, and yet the void is listening. Remember that, that forensic omission I talked about last week? Yeah, that's the void. It's listening. See, it's something in there that you're not told about or don't see, the omission. But the omission is something, isn't it? The absence is something in there. And if you have a little inside what I just said, then you start seeing what I tell you. When you have, you can see transparent things. You can see, I see dead, dead thing. I see dead people. This is whole society. It's the complainers, the whiners, the the adopters. It's the people who rally up around people who want to save them. It's people who uh, who want to follow like the, the Pied Piper. All the people that somehow get the mind, uh, get their mind and trap it. And I work real hard. It's, it's an ongoing battle to make sure I don't get my mind trapped. And it may sound like it's not very accepting, but it's a qual- it's a qualifying non-acceptance is what it is. It's not closing the door. It's saying I'm not going to just be give over to that. I'm not just going to give over to my complaint and whining. And my, even my own prejudice. I'm going to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to commit to this. I want to see, I want to investigate exactly the truth that I can find. And it doesn't, and so when you don't hear me talk about everything that's popular, it's probably because I've looked at a lot of it and found out there's missing links in the chains and I don't go for those anymore. I've stopped doing any of that. And the way, another way you do that is you just stop listening to other people's uh, fantasies. You've picked something that you want to see done. Forget the rest. You pick it, whether you have support or not, and you just go working along to make it right. And as I've said, in some things I may be available to orient your thoughts in order to proceed more correctly. I've identified for you over time many people who are kind of renowned for what they'll tell people, and uh, to me they look like walking wounded. They're really not an authority of a thought, and they're not someone I would follow for a philosophy in life or bind up with people through that uh, with a lot of people. I find that they're pretty failed. They're not bad people, but they've been harmed, and so they're responding to that wound. Now, we all have the wound. Now, my started, mine started with a wound 30-something years ago. Now. And it's developed into whatever it has been, to the point that this, this last week's we're making some very I'm writing some very important paperwork and as I said it's not on me whether or not what well, it's not on me whether or not I'm right or wrong it's that there's certain objective basis that must be followed that are not and the other end having the duty is going is now under test in ways that was never tested before and that's a pretty interesting point to watch If the society now is not in the place to understand what I've just said in a document through the Jefferson Mining District to an important place, maybe we weren't worthy of what we have anyway. And then I really wonder, if that's the case, two steps down, why do you complain that the chains are on you? Why do you complain of the... I mean, it it is like The Matrix is not a movie. I mean, just wanting something to be disgruntled over just so you live comfortably in your pod. And I guess that's where society wants to go. I don't know. I, I don't see a reflection otherwise, and although there's a few of you out there that really inspire me on your own endeavors. Whatever I may sound like in judgment sometimes. But point is, wrap this up. You have to settle down and make a decision of a wrong. Then you have to, and, and in earnest, and persist in that, and things start to show up that you need. And you'll start focusing on the more important things. Let's say, just uh, as an example, Let's say it is the smart meter. And I've just told you that you just can't complain about the existence of the smart meter. It's in the utility commission. That's in the state. So I'm giving, already giving you a pathway that you're going to have to address. And I want to give you an example of a, of a partial success in that, mass, in that method. 
So there shouldn't be a question that you need, if you didn't think about that before, even though it was available, or even thought different, that unless you have a success, what I'm telling you is a partial success. is better than what you have in your own mind. And I, so if you're, just as an example, you're interested in the smart meter, uh, then there's a way to address it. You go to the state's utility commission in a particular way. You go find the administrative defect that they didn't do that violates your rights in those similarly situated. Is a better path with at least a one success in one place that I know that we did. It's not done yet, but it's got, uh, we got them to capitulate, which confirmed the fact that the savings clause provision was not provided, which now is going to be egg on them for like forever until they fix it at least if they can they can fix it by fixing that is better an approach than everything else I've seen around that people just want to gripe about paying more or having the smart meter or the health effects and all that you're missing the whole dynamic and point and the other side wants you to miss that point and I'm here to tell you stop missing the point if it's really important for you and you have a sense that it's wrong about the smart meter you I'm telling you, you're not in the pro most people. I haven't found anybody that isn't in a pro improper position. In fact, people are resistant to the proper position, even after partial successes, which is really a not, always something that uh, I'm just a marvel at at some level. It just makes me shake my head. We're not going to do this, and yet there's the example of how close we are to doing it, and so I, I persist to try to give settle down some people. I see conversation. I see comments. You have to make a decision first. Is it? Do you want to do it? If you don't, that's okay. But again, with all the wrong that's going on, and the fact that we have to protect against ourselves against those encroachments, or they come on us, it's. I don't see the logic behind that at all, and I don't see the even the intuitional rightness of that as well either. There's a couple of levels here you have to kind of deal with, and and I don't see. It hasn't come, and I've not been explained yet. I, I'm open to any of this, uh, que if there's a question, uh, any explanation as to that. How, how, is it, how is it right when you see a wrong not to right it? How is it right to not stop an aggression against you, however passive it looks like it's coming? However passive it seemed like you fall, fell into it? However uh, right it looked like in the imposition, but they find out later it's wrong? How is it something that you don't stop? Again, it's a crime against you. I've tried to elevate this to the felonies that I can show you they are, not because I want to see them elevated. I want you to see that there, these things that come against us in the country, United States of America, are crimes against you from an official capacity. Or even now the more adjunct addition where third-party special interests, you might call them NGOs or others, are actually doing getting the right to you through the official. That's felony. Why would I bring, and so when you get that, why aren't, and you, what, and why aren't you looking at it to get that, first of all? But once you get that, how are you not a, finding the felon and going after that one little part? I don't understand. It's something I don't understand. Instead, instead of talking and whining and complaining about how bad it is. So while you're on the one project, okay, the rest are being beat. You're getting hurt on the rest, but at least you're fixing one. Hopefully someone else is more capable in a different area of skill set. They'll pick up the one that you didn't understand, and you'll have their example in the future that makes it go so much faster for you. But none of that happens until you make that first decision. You, again, you can't listen to what I'm saying and bring your prejudice about what you think has to happen in judgment of what I'm saying. You can't do it. It's just not going to. I just know that. You don't know that, but I know that. And so you're just slowing yourself up, and this is not, you know, this is not on me. I already know what we're doing, and I know that we make successes, uh, even as partial as they might be. They're steps forward into the right position, into the right place, and that doesn't happen on their own. As I say, the, the Twitter bad don't fix itself, folks. And to give credit to some of these, some of these concepts, uh, these subject matters are a little bit complicated. Not to, not to warn you away from, and if that's the case for you. Don't choose those first. And then so spend a little while here trying to encourage you how on things maybe I don't talk about. I see conversation in lots of places that really is not going to go anywhere. It's self-deprecating. It's self-judgmental. It's uh, throwing questions in that don't aren't even in the in the mix. When all you have to do is that admit, either admit you don't want to really do anything, or Admit to doing one thing. 
admit to fixing one wrong, however small. I mean, really, however small. And it's going to get us back into those things that most of us were taught as little ones, how to, in school, how to do the more formal thing. And I'm only pointing you then the guideline for that happens to be in things called statutes and codes. And I haven't found them to be overly oppressive, actually. In fact, I've got to the point where I can see within them, if you understand them, they actually are the answer. And they expose the very problem that you're complaining for. And so, when, again, our problem is, as, as a mass population, it's not so easy to see that real, clear, that is easy to identify. And so, I guess to say that, that's what the opportunity, I think, was handed to me. And I'm, and again, not to exalt what I do, it's just, I'm in the, it's like, what is this? There's a saying about all this. It's a 20 years, you know, you're a success overnight. No, it took 20 years to get here. But it can't, you're a success, if you will, a success. You were, you were able to, to prevail because you prepared. And the opportunity arose to you to exploit, if I can say that without sounding negative here. You exploit the opportunity you prepared for. And if no one else was preparing for it, then you were the only one that were able to do that at that time. And I haven't heard too many that, that follow this path that I have, and I was just uh, asked, offered an opportunity uh, that I did my best to fulfill. And we'll see. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't pass, it's nothing on me. I already, this is the interesting thing about you being innocent. If the truth won't be accepted, if objective basis in this country is not, a, not accepted, if due process is not accepted, if remedies are not accepted, we have a different problem. We have a much larger problem. And how would you be able to identify that if all you're doing right now is confused and arguing with people and have no basis of how it even gets there or think you know? Remember, if you think you know and then you have the one that's in control says, well, what you think you know kind of got undone and redone in a certain time long ago, and you continue to believe that your way is the is the way it should be, you're going to walk yourself into nothing but frustration. What I find fascinating for me is I adopted what I'm told is, notwithstanding what I thought was supposed to be, and I've come a whole lot farther faster. In fact, till last night there was a, some, I think uh, Grimner's uh, account on Twitter put out some guy, I don't even know, Swalwell, a picture. These are the two flags I fly in my office. I look at those flags, and so here's an opportunity to inform people that the flag he's flying is a Civil War determined flag, not under military control. But yeah, the gold fringe was there. But it wasn't because, oh, it's the gold fringe flag is military. It's actually something very particular, and it's defined. And so instead of talking out of our opinions about all this stuff and trying to blow up certain things and then, to, and then forget about it, I hope, in the, in the, again, in the Twitter... I pointed to a document, objective basis, you can read the authority, why that guy is presenting you what's a flag under military observation. And then I just asked the question, is he, is he with this flag, is, by this definition in law, who is he serving, the War Department or the people directly, directly the people? And then I just asked again, trying to get people to start thinking. What what did the Civil War do to this place? And as I was having a discussion, I don't have the ability to talk to too many people sometimes and work out even my own um, thoughts a bit, which is sometimes I have sounding boards or people that I can interject really good substantial things. I don't have many people to do that, but nonetheless I'm thinking about this, talking a bit about the problem. There's so many subtleties about what I talk about that as I was looking at this military condition that he's promoting... And if you get the the, the the Twitter, you'll see I'm also talking about the little flag he has on the door. Well, that looked like a, a, a ribbon, a uh, riband that would hold a medal. And so it looked like a military official who purports to be a congressman uh, that was just looking for a medal to pin on his ribbon uh, in the future. So to me, again, it just says a little bit story, but I go to the law. The law comes from the Civil War times and, and, before, and then after. And, and so what is he actually saying that he probably doesn't know? Is he representing the people, or is he representing the military dictatorship that's on this country? Well, I think by the rule, I can say pretty much that he's representing the, the, the military 
provision, but it's a specific military thing. And it's just a specific thing as well. It's not even a, it's a flag, but not a flag. You have to go look at what they talk about. Call it a color. And so in this, uh, in this, within the promotion that we get today, the SJW promotion and all this, all this inclusiveness, they tell you what's up front. And until you see that, you won't understand. See, it's not about the fact that we're in a, for me, well, it is about it, but it's not the way you work through it. If that's the case, given that's the fact, it's a military, the congressman is not a congressman in the constitutional sense directly. He's a congressman through a, a military control. He's in the executive branch side as a lawmaker. Why? Now you start to understand why I keep talking about policy. They're not making law, they're making policy. And you start to, instead of fighting that condition, you start to look at it to understand the condition so that you better move through it. And if you look at that, as I've been telling you, you go through that, um, that, that teaching lesson, there's nothing stopping what I've been telling you to do that causes harm and, and attention to be drawn to it within even the executive side with what I've been telling you. In other words, I don't fight the, that condition because that condition's bigger and can hurt me. What I do is I find out that is the condition, but that condition within the context of its, of its existence has certain limitations, even so. And that subtlety, I don't argue that they make policy. All I know is they do, which means I know whatever they're doing cannot affect what I'm doing. Why? Because what I'm doing either predates or displaces what they've done by certain authorities, which you mention eventually. And I, I'm not going to go on and on about how that works. You have to get involved before. That's the big deep end that's uh, kind of fun to swim in. If I'm going to be in this in this, in this open air prison, I, I'm trying to make it a little bit more joyous, if you will, while I actually try to oust this condition. And I don't oust the condition. I oust its effect on me. You can too. You'll, you'll have an argument in your mind about how what I just said, uh, some of those that have been involved in this a bit, uh, but you'll, there's not an argument once you get here and you see what I'm doing. The subtlety of the approach is the fact that it's, that if, if you try to go against what you see, it'll be an obstruction. If you admit to what you find is reality, you'll be able to find the path through there. Now, totally esoteric. I can't prove it all to you. I just know that what I'm asserting to you and how this works works because I admit whether it's true or not it could be not a truth but it seems to work this way they just gave me evidence that the so called congressman agrees to this as well every day he puts these flags up he's looking to be a, get a medal of honor for what he does to the federal military control as a congressman should kind of shake you up but that means that whatever they're doing cannot interfere with things that are more substantial prior to them. Now I talk about the relation back doctrine. And when we start asserting this, we start finding their armor is is not there. They have weaknesses that they can't address. And so it takes a different thought process. It takes you settling down, getting into a, some kind of a wrong you want to make right, and keep, start moving through it, not the way prejudices that you've been learned over the Internet and all the past and all what all people told you how it was. But what you see to be the short dots put right close together, the small the dots put right close together that prove out like a chain of title, chain of evidence, a chain of proof that you find, absolutely find how it works, that you apply. And we were, again, uh, just a, another, maybe not so esoteric, it was a friend of mine came by, he a, wanted to do a quick claim, started to read the statute, got confused. But if you settle down, if your objective is to make a quick claim, you settle down on that, and you start looking at what the statutes are telling you, they're describing something that you're not doing. And then you start looking for the, the savings provisions, or the things that are not mandatory. Things, wor words like must and may. And then you realize, oh, that's an example that they're giving me that I could enter into, but I'm not required to enter into it. 
you know, if I do enter into it, then I'm subject to what they say. If I don't and have a different authority for what I'm doing, they can't. And you know, that's as simple as how this all works. As I told you before, you can't deny, or you can deny not being somewhere, but you have to find some other place for yourself. And that has to be done more formally than what your opinions are. And as I said, I've told you that the mining law provided that other place. And it provided a position of innocence, and to a very high degree of innocence, and, and actually to a high degree of not just innocence, but that must be protected and at a very high level that we haven't enjoyed, that sits right there, that shall be, if you have that republic. So we're going through the back door a little bit to look through an oppression that if you fight it, you will lose. If you don't, you're getting a whole lot quicker through the steps that show you how you prevail against it. And as I'll just return to what thought, thought occurred to me on this. Like I don't even think about this stuff talking to you, so maybe it's, maybe it's not so organized. But uh, as I've said before, one, just one decision maker, one, someone who has the seat of decision, one, even if they're in a potential quorum condition, one decision maker, and the law is a majority. Not pausing here. Let you think about that. Well, what about the majority? What about the quorum? Well, that's what I'm telling you. This thing is so subtle. You you, you don't even have to ask that question when you see what I do. When you understand what I just said. Even during in this in this overthrow, where the Tim's case said the Supreme Court just came back to tell us in February, the Civil War fundamentally changed this place. Yes, last night in that flag, would, how did how did this how did the Civil War change this place that a congressman thinks he's a congressman, a lawmaker, that he works through the the a symbol, the 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 color of, of a military official that's underneath the executive branch? How, how does this how does this go unseen and then unresponded to? is a marvel of how societies are controlled and how you are controlled and how we've allowed ourselves to control when there's no authority for that to happen, actually. And this is a different type of thing, but one just one decision maker who who presents the, the actual law, not, not what you think it is and not what we've been told it is and not the adjunct evasion of law, is a majority. And that subtlety is missing everybody. And yet we're having so much, it's slow, but we're having so much success on not fighting, fighting the condition, but looking into it and finding that, I guess I will call it like what we see in the Admiralty, which is, again, mer law merchant and international. It's, it's the new neutral. You find the neutral path when you find the law, notwithstanding the rule notwithstanding the dictatorship, notwithstanding the commander of the district, notwithstanding the spaghetti western that all the instrumentalities that you see called government have to comport to. And it's not something I argue with. You, you never, I tell you, I avoid, I say avoid, of, I've already seen that they have the answer to it, avoiding the argument of that gold fringe flag. You just avoid it. You don't have to. You just know you think taking that, that, that thing out of any particular place is going to stop the over the overrule of the commander of the district that you heard was invented or created in 1871? You think that you think you pull it out of the courtroom and still doesn't sit over the land? Is 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 the subtle failure in that whole theory? So instead, you you look everywhere you go. It's all telling you you live in a place that's not actually old. It, it's been adulterated in some time. I can point to the Civil War. You, the authorities today tell you that. Why wouldn't you just take that as reality and realize that conditions how you'll respond? And then you hear this guy behind the wood says, notwithstanding that condition, you can still move through. You can still get to what you were told was supposed to be. And why people resist what I'm saying and would rather just argue or I don't know, kind of flip out about what they're getting, this, that, and the other. I, I don't even know. That's what I, 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 that has to be a mental in, illness, and I'm not judging that. I think that is what they've caused. 
That's not an excuse, though. So you have to, if you hear my voice, you have to start asking yourself the question, do I want to be mentally mentally interfered with by whom, however, or do I want to stand on my own two feet, take responsibility, and start to crawl myself back out of the hole they've dug in, that I've been digging for myself, and they're going to bury me in, in this stinking abyss. Boy, haven't I gotten way off my tabs. Anyway, I guess it's probably... I'm always asking, where is everybody? Where is everybody to help themselves? And I don't really have an answer because I have no real context. I look at the social media. It's just a, it's a lost, barren wasteland. I ask for support, and you, a couple of you step up, which I'm very grateful for. Not really for me. It's for others that are listening. And having... And, and, having, and they're actually tossing and turning with this thing about uh, at times about well, what, what am I doing? What, what do I do? And I have to say that 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 problem says there's a problem and it's bigger outside of you except to the fact that you have a decision to make. Either engage it or then I don't know what. Because if you don't engage it, then you're just, as I said before, you become part of the noise and the problem. You become the fog, the, the confetti that, can, that, that covers up what those of us that are trying to do something to expose to others are doing. And so I don't I don't know what more to do. I guess part of it is trying to figure out, well, if we can clear up some of the smoke, maybe it would be easier for people to see. But th there's something in us that doesn't want to actually take responsibility, and I don't know what that is. So all I can do is go step by step. Those of you have a, a wrong one on, you see out there, and there's plenty of wrong, and I hear all the, I hear lots of complaints then it should be a target-rich environment to choose one. That's the key. Choose a wrong. Go through the analysis. I started at the beginning of the broadcast a bit. Go take your selection, choose it, and then put yourself on the path of, of how to resolve and solve that. Arrest it. Otherwise, I don't know. The future is not looking very, very good. Uh, for uh, what I don't even know. See, I have no thought about it. It's it's going to be what it is. I'm not going to be here. And I don't even know some partly. Sometimes I don't know why I care, but I do somehow. Well, I guess we'll move on. I'm just uh, I get I start to think about th that part, and I just wonder for you all. And I wonder why we go through these arguments uh, or not, or disregards, or just back just. But close off any just, that's the one that's interesting to me just close off all interaction that solves the problem but, but anyway that's not for me to decide I'm not that guy that gal I've decided uh, certain things I wanted to make right I certainly the path has changed the path has uh, gotten very uh, very narrow but it's been very narrow to a very important point and that happens to be uh, the law of the land and whether that is going to mean anything and if, if I know, whether many people do, uh, I know if, if that's going to be lost, there's, there's really no future in, in a lot of things. You, you will be doing what you're told. You will be hooked into what you're controlled by. You will be listening to the scam and breads and circuses that they give you for however you don't like it. It'll be just like The Matrix. It's not a movie. You're going to, you're, that's just feeding into the thing that you're annoyed about that keeps you interested to be keeping in your pod. And, and that's what they want to continue. They don't want people like myself and those like you that do the same thing, you, you, even though you may feel you're not making much progress or whatever, that you're out there, you're trying to solve something better than what you've seen done before you. And if you're following the things I'm doing and you're thinking the way I am, you're seeing that. It's just a matter of learning more things and giving yourself more tools and awarenesses. Because this obstruction is pretty complete, so you're going to continue. It's not a, there's no, that's why I say there's no silver bullet. And almost there can't be because the way this place was designed and then the way it was adulterated, uh, it takes the unified people, literally. I mean, the Thomas Jefferson quote is really insightful. How did he know to do that? How did they know that that was going to be the condition? Is having a very good insight on the past and understanding it, the truth of that point. And here we are in that day. The revolution has happened again, and we're going to lose this one again. Uh, some people, you know, you say the Revolutionary War and all that stuff. Well, look what it got us. It didn't. It came back to the same types of controls, didn't it? 
We, we could write the Declaration of Independence today. But I view that more as a, as a whining because they told us to, about what was going to happen and we weren't diligent and vigilant against that, that we're here that day again. And yet I look around, I see, but it, it's, there's, there's an alternative. They talk about a dispute, uh, alternative dispute. I say, use the alternative that's not the dispute. I say, don't make an issue. Don't create a question. Instead, most people want to agree to make the question. And I, I really, at that, you get to a certain point, I guess there's no way I can understand that anymore. So, so I wanted to start out today on something that's kind of troubling me. Uh, I'm going to move to the tabs now. Uh, let me get so pick something, folks. Before you, you can listen to me and all, but pick something and then start listening for the things I'm saying that you can use techniques and this and that, and start applying them. Start learning. Start going to the codes. Start doing what you have to do. Go to the, you know, it's like we don't not that we don't read history. We use it to find out. I look at it right now to find out what's not happening that that ought to happen. Who am I to say? Well, it's in there that. I read that it tells me I'm there because I'm reading that it's there. That's who I am. As I was commenting to, we're, we're looking at commerce, folks. There's a friend of mine, a colleague. He's uh, we we we've got an independent observation of what the definition for commerce is. You'd all think you you all think that should be settled by now, but it, but it's not, and that's a fascination to me. So what the problem is is they throw you all under commerce. Most most all of y'all, and most often the time is a commerce condition. Well. In this property, this the land disposal law, it's not commerce, and it can't be forced into commerce. But that's what they've done by, by the fraud of omission. And so, a colleague of mine is, um, has for a few years now, uh, fixated on trying to resolve this and educating people on this condition. Ran across some documentation. Uh, it has even more, more authority, uh, external uh, citations of of what commerce is and, and then I delineating what it, it is not. And it clarifies what we've known and what we've been, what we've been saying over, uh, for years. But I looked at the latest document when he wanted me to read it because he's writing another document to inform more people uh, where he's at. Moving the, the, the education of that basic concept along, showing what commerce is versus what production actually is and how you delineate the two. And I realized, that even through all this time, finding even more confirmation for this condition, that commerce is not production, and production cannot suffer what, is, is what commerce suffers, and there's, it's identifiable in confirming what we already knew. I realized in reading the latest document, and I knew this, but now it's confirmation, the system discusses what commerce is relative to production, but it doesn't explain why that condition has to be there. And that's what we've been doing, or I have been doing for years, explaining why that, that, that chasm, I tell you, sits there. So until you get involved, you're not going to be able to have the, uh, you'll have unique insights that come to you on possibly things that have really never been done before that continue the harm against us. So I'm not just focused on that, but part of my focus is now looking a lot closer at making sure we assert why that separation is and get away from having to get, make an issue over what it actually extends to or what it doesn't. Once you understand the underlying foundation, it isn't a question what commerce is and what production is. Why? Because they're two separate things, and commerce requires production. But how do we know production? It has to be. It happens to come with why the land was disposed to the use. The use is the production. That's a grant. That's a contract between you and the government that you, the government itself cannot come to and interfere with. And what am I saying? I'm talking a bunch of court cases that explain this to me. The, any grantor can't come against its grant. Your grant is relates back to the granting act or whatever the granting decision was. It could be private to you. Can apply this public or private, government or private. You get whatever is granted and to the exclusion of everybody in the whole world is why. That's never talked about. Do you think we talk about it now? Do you think that made it to the most important document I've probably ever written that may never be read? You better bet it went there. You better bet we said that. 
And can you understand a, a nation, the foundation of which was property, that the highest laws in the land, the biggest judges, the most important so-called congressmen and senators, either don't know it or know to subvert it, and do it consistently? That to this day, the reason for why that distinction is there has never been, never been made. And I'm sitting in a position today after my studies to be able to be someone who at least gives someone an idea. Will it be said to me? No. And it'll never be found out what, what, what I just wrote to some, to, to, to two people. It'll just pop out somewhere. It'll be for our good. And that'll be good enough. But can you imagine looking at a situation for a hundred and so many, hundred forty years, that never got to the bottom of what the distinction was, is how and how they're subverting your life. Sits so right in there in the omission. I talked about another style of omission that I talked about last week on the broadcast. Reading for the things that aren't there that ought to be there requires you to know different than most every all the other prairie dogs around you, and that gets real hard to do when you have uh, psyops, if you will, uh, these planned interferences going on. Now I'll move on to my tabs because if something's come up and uh, that I'm a little concerned about, I don't know. I'm a little disappointed uh, about it because you tend to think we tend like alt media and all this. Now I know we've been exposed. I say say we. I don't mean me. Uh, I mean we as the the people that look at what, even identifying what alt media is. That has been found out to be just another game too, and yet within the uh, the net they try to throw at least this broadcast. I'm sure, although we don't have a such a following that we raise to any level to be of concern to the system, which in a way I kind of like. But but again, it, it doesn't it doesn't do the outreach it needs to be. Uh, that this thing there's something that's been coming along, and I wanted to warn people about it. Whether or not I'm right or wrong, I don't know. But I wanted you to see this problem. Whether you thought about it or not, whether it's important, I don't know. This is me. This is us tuning up how we um, learn and discern uh, what's going on. But you know this Julian Assange thing. Uh, it's important, and it's important, and it is important relative to the to the speech thing. But I, I think I've been having some trouble with this. I've been having, uh, and it's been a long time, and now it's starting to rise to the surface that someone who has, I guess, favor in the so-called alt media or that thing. The thing that's not uh, mainstream, I guess, it, uh, came up, and it isn't the first time I've seen it, but that this guy came up and said this. Uh, well, I guess I'll just tell you what I tweeted out, that this title, Julian Assange and the Crucifixion of Free Speech, I, I determined to be, an, uh, seems to be to be un, an unfortunate title, an unfortunate title and correlation. And... Then I mentioned this, uh, adopting a slow-simmering psyop as a question. And what is bothering me about this is I was hoping, uh, at least the people that were f freedom-minded, want to be telling more of the truth, would not link but Julian Assange to a Messiah figure. The title is very interesting. Uh, Julian Assange and the Crucifixion of Free Speech. It looks like it's talking about a correlation that doesn't attach, but they're not really talking about free speech, and you see that when they go talk about the report. They bring Julian Assange up. That I was troubled all this time. There's this quiet thing going on throughout the publications that try and connect up Julian Assange with the Messiah characteristic. And I have trouble with that thing coming along. Not that freedom of speech is under attack, but that it's actually being subverted through misinterpretation of what's going on so that they're bringing in something else that causes more strife. And I don't want to get too lost in this, but really, but I want, I want you to understand as they bring this thing through, and all the players are still coming up and start talking about this. And you're going to get a link. I don't know whether this gentleman, I'm not going to name him, I don't want to judge this. I'm just troubled. This guy has made a linkage as well. That this idea of the crucifixion brings up the Messiah factor attached to the name Julian Assange. This article could have been said the crucifixion of free speech. But I've been a, I would have been a lot more happy with it, if you will. But to tie it to a figure, and there's so many others as well, 
whether whatever you feel about Julian Assange, I don't know, but what there is certainly some things under attack that we know. But if you look very carefully, there's another game, another psyop going on, and something else on top that's riding in that I think people are missing. And so I I did a quick check, and uh, again, it's not obvious, but the, the earliest thing I could find in the quick check was the discussion of crucifixion and Julian Assange together. And I found that, interestingly, another interesting connection, though I don't know meaning yet, uh, on the Sputnik, which is apparently the Russian-supported uh, public publication, uh, the crucifixion of Julian Assange, never send to know for whom the bells toll, was the addition. But here's the connection, the, one of the first that I remember uh, that, that I've been watching, the uh, crucifixion of Julian Assange. Uh, now, again, the, the slatent Messiah figure which can bring on a whole lot of adherents that are really missing, going to miss the point as their, as people's perceptions are being controlled is the problem I'm having here. And they go through a story, but this was back in uh, Ju uh, July of 2018. I first noticed this, this linkage. And the problem with that is it doesn't have to be made to still get to the point and keep the various things separate. Instead, it was brought together. And it, now it... it and then middle of this time, uh, I got to now go to Zero Hedge. From, they say it explicitly: from Jesus Christ to Julian Assange, when dissidents become enemies of the state. Now, there's a whole lot of problems in there. It depends on what your view is. Uh, what I found interesting is they refer to John Whitehead, who's an attorney. I have tons of problems with John Whitehead, even though he says some good-sounding things up front. Uh, I don't think he's a bad guy generally, but uh, there's things that are not being said. There's things that are said in off ways. There's things that are said instead of other things that I know about that cause me a problem with all this. Maybe if we were able to sit in a room and have a, uh, you know, have a have a beer and talk about it, maybe we could work it all out. But right now, at the point of being influential, I'm seeing a connection to all these same players uh, over time bringing in this thing that I want. I don't, I'm just going to say, I want you to be aware of whether or not it ends up being anything. I don't know whether you find any importance to y'all. I don't know. To me, this happens to be with the ability of the whoever is in control of mind control is how they're controlling our minds. You need to be able to identify these threads so that you can pr better protect yourself on uh, all the time, essentially. Uh, I, I'm having, so I'm having a trouble with this linkage. And then it comes out again uh, here. Uh, with this article just a couple days ago, that this this Messiah factor thing. Well, then they come up with these additional charges. Now, I'm kind of interested in how the dynamic goes. And then everybody dropped on it has now been saying, and all these same players are saying, this is an attack on free speech. I'm not so sure, folks. I do know it could be. I do know that could be one of the elements. But when you go look at the charges... And you kind of bundle them up. They're talking about being charged as, under espionage. Remember, in the, in the courts, there can be a challenge to the extent of the of something. And this is what you can see this historically. This is people riding in the back, having to ride the back of the bus or not. This is the whether or not you get an abortion or not. These are made up issues to come up to a decision to do something. And I'm. Sensing this is what's going on. When you look at an espionage, the government's saying he has the right to speak and publish, but not to the extent of this this stuff here. And I look at that basic premise and I say, well, if that hasn't been decided, the law is set up that that can be decided, even if it's set up. And so, I'm. I don't like that they're doing it, and I don't like what they've done to Julian Assange and I don't like how they're approaching it. The dynamic is fascinating to me. It, and more from the technical procedural part. Again, of what's not being done versus also this latent, slowly developing, psy what I consider a psyop in my mind at this point, of a messiah figure being set up for a crucifixion. And it won't be anything about what they do there. How what they're going to be doing in the result that I want people to to look at here, or be cognizant of, if anything else, that remember the omission, as I've been explaining. There's procedural things within the the attack that they've done that put him through courts 
that none of his lawyers are doing that are sitting there to be done, or only partially done, that needed to be done better. That when you have a more comprehensive look at what the potentials are, what what are the tools they have? And they're not using the weapons in the war? I have to start wondering about that. You know, there's always a question of competence versus versus agenda. Knowledge and not doing it, or just not, not doing it. But these are more, again, foundational concepts I'm talking. What do I usually talk about? Challenging the jurisdiction. Challenging the authority. Having an answer to an action sitting when you have the burden. You have to have an answer. You don't sit quiet to that. He did that in his so-called sentencings under the bail, uh, the bail, bail, <laughs> the the failure to 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 apply, uh, agree to his bail uh, agreement. The there was things he had to say that he didn't, and then they tried to say some stuff in the subsequent hearing that was done. There's nothing, no purpose to say all that. And so, I see a problem in this whole condition. But I don't. I think if you don't aren't aware what's actually being do what's going on here, that you're going to miss. This looks to me to be a big play, and it gets your attention on certain things, and you forget because the authorities don't do this and don't recognize it. You don't think it's there to do. In fact, you're not searching around to even know that it's there. Someone like myself, I'm wondering why they don't do certain things. This extradition order come from the United States. I've already, I've already told. In fact, and here's the other point. I've told them. I've written again a Twitter. It's kind of an interesting medium. I've written them and told them. Why didn't they challenge the competency of a court? That's a territorial court that has no authority over the United States itself relative to Julian Assange at all. Where do I get that? Where are the statutes? For? Why aren't they challenging, even just to get it out on the record? And to get an answer, again, now we can move into the next more formal application, would be the quo warranto I talk about. Why weren't those things filed to try and stop an extradition request from the United States? So I ask the question to you, when you hear that, would you, when you knew that was a, could have been done and should have been done, wouldn't you ask the same question? And if it's not being done, what does that mean? When I see the promotion, is he's the Messiah figure, and free speech is, is going to be the, the beneficiary, the, the destruction of it. There's a problem here bigger than what I'm, I think people are appreciating. And I think if we don't, if we keep it connected, the and, Julian Assange and the crucifixion of free speech, free speech instead of saying <laughs> Julius Assange is totally different than the free speech and let's look at what they're doing and let's look and see if there's a legitimacy and I have to say that if, if there was a question as to it there is a legitimacy to test the line everyone wants to complain about testing the line but that's what this system is about testing those lines otherwise you wouldn't have the right black people would still be sitting at the back of the bus and for those of you that would uh, participate you wouldn't have the right of abortion which is now slowly being eaten up for another remember I told you that there was going to be a pendulum swing between those two things what you're missing underneath it is that this is a, a business of parts for parts for Roe versus Wade. That's what you're deciding now. And at any rate, so there's a we miss we watch the pendulum swing and forget to look what it's swinging over. Same thing here. We're connecting up a Messiah figure concepting and attaching it to a very important uh, condition and right. And and then we're attaching processes that come to it that may have a right to be there for however distasteful it might seem. And we're going to convolute or commingle the condition, and we're going to lose sight of the real objective that was being uh, targeted. Because they're going to come out, I just want to point, they're going to come out and say, no, 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 here's the limit to what you can do. It's like you can't, uh, the, the idea, the dicta that was stated by the judge in the case uh, where that states, uh, for example, you can't go into a crowded theater and, and yell fire. That's not within your right to do. Your right is not to cause harm uh, in your statements. It's, again, there's a law against inciting riot through your words. It's these kinds of things that cause harm or incite people to do harm is not agreeable underneath that provision. That means there's going to always be the test.
what you're forgetting is that you didn't know there was a whole bunch of process that they're just negating to push this thing through. And we exalt people into Messiah status and forget the actual condition that that actually would be. And it's not the Messiah at all. Anyway, I don't know if I'm got any way to clarify more of what my thoughts are. I'm troubled by this linkage. I'm troubled by people not seeing the procedural defects that are omitted, like I was talking last week about the, the forensic omission of what is not going on that ought to be going on if this was actually, actually substantially what you would expect relative to your claim of free speech. You want to deny where the source of all that kind of is, but and then expect that it's going to fix itself. It doesn't, and it's all under challenge, and that's the other point. And so when there's not things going on to actually challenge jurisdiction authority of certain documentations and authorities that purport to be that, and I know they're there, and especially where I've told, here, look at this statute and do this, look at this statute and see this part, and nobody's doing that, I've got a real problem off the bat. And then they come up with this kind of thing, there, this, I can't see it elsewise as a, as a, as a, a play, as a psyop. That what what they're getting people to buy into, or what they're people giving people, letting people give up in this addressment, is uh, is not completely clear to me. But I see the danger of of focusing on on the Messiah factor instead of what's actually going on, and I see it as fomenting dis, disgruntlement in people, and so they bring on that so-called war that they're that they're wanting to see done because they're in place already to deal with it. As we see Trump turns to full force of the government on perceived political enemies. Again, this is written by someone who wants to put in what Trump is doing here recently uh, against his so-called political enemies, when in fact, I'm going to show you something here in the law that sits there, and if he's going to do this, then I see it as an opportunity. We've already told him to, actually, which I find fascinating. We've written a document to Trump and said, here, you need to, these two things are working uh, on our request here, for not our, what we require, and uh, we put it in all our documentation as well, that he's that I can point to you he's doing, but the people that are sitting on the, the political fence or or on the other side of him say that they can't understand that this is a, this is not known in, in law. And so the Trump turns a, f a full force of government on perceived political enemies. It, uh, President uh, Donald Trump found a f four former federal officials guilty of treason Thursday and then commissioned his intelligence agencies to help the Department of Justice prove it. At the same time, he's blocking Congress from executing its constitutional duty to execute oversight of his administration, not only with regard to his, uh, of his campaign ties to Russia and the interference determined on special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation, but also on a host of other fronts. He's wielding power in ways not seen in the United States in generations, if ever, and which many experts say, isn't that quaint, experts say, do not resemble global norms for heads of state. Quote, this, really, this is really a feature of petty dictators where you see the power of investigation abilities being used as a political tool against enemies. Claire Finkelstein, a director of the Center of Ethics and the Rule of Law at the University of Pennsylvania Law School, said in a telephone interview, quote, In this case, I believe it is a deliberate attempt to confuse the public, to spin a certain narrative about how the intelligence community to throw pixie dust over the facts surrounding the 2016 election, she said. And it's remarkable in my mind that, in my mind, not mine, hers, in my mind that he's been successful with these tactics in terms of convincing a significant share of the American public that he is the victim of the deep state conspiracy. Well, we go through and analyze all that, how wrong that statement is anyway. But let me just go back to the objective basis. It's not an issue here. Is it re if, if it is that it hasn't been done for a long time, does it mean that it's not there to do? And if it is there to do, isn't this is just a statement on that uh, her part that we haven't had accountability to the laws I'm going to show you exist right now that authorize this president, any president, to do this? And I'm not even talking about the dictator 
dictator that they are, the dictator in chief they are under the, under the new civil war of uh, the United States. I'm talking about writing the, in the code relative to things to do, and that Trump actually did this correct when I point you to the code that sits there that may not be actually being enforced, that may need it, have needed to be enforced if we are, were a diligent and vigilant populace wanting accountability. That, that crimes are going on that are left uninvestigated, I think, is our problem. I'm not necessarily endorsing what Trump's done, and I don't know his actual motive about political enemies. Maybe they are. But if there, he has probable cause to believe that treason is done, let me read you two sections of code. I've cited to you these things over before, and here's my thing about it. If he now knows about these, this is what we're asking him to do on other levels. Now he's not unfamiliar. So as I'm looking and pulling information over time together on what he's willing to do and what he knows, I can now incorporate things like, well, as you know, 18 U.S.C. 4 says this, as you just executed on these four characters over here. So now I get to integrate his prior action. Now I know he does it, even though he has not, not acknowledged it before. He's now acknowledging it in the media, and I get to come in uh, decide if we decide to do this, uh, as I build this uh, this letter in my mind about how to address this guy, I get to come in and say this. 18 U.S.C. 4, misprison of felony. Whoever having knowledge of the actual commission of a felony cognizable by a court of the United States conceals and does not as soon as possible make known the same to a judge or other person in civil or military order authority under the United States, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than three years or both. Do you think that the Democrats seeing this and knowing this is there, if he knew that someone was committing a felony, which treason I think is a bit higher than that, that he couldn't be brought underneath this statute himself once he found treason? Shows you the law professor in that university, the same subversions of our life, doesn't understand law doesn't understand the president did exactly what he's supposed to do under law relative to this. I'm not talking about whether or not it's, what, how it's motivated, just that he's found by the law, by this law, he's found someone doing at least a felony, and he's turned it over to an other person in civil or military authority under the United States. Now, why isn't it say crime criminal there? Instead, it says military authority, which I find fascinating as heck, folks. But the president not looking deeper, found treason, has authority, notwithstanding what the law professor will tell you, has authority and actually obligation underneath liability to this criminal jurisdiction to have to tell someone of the crime to get it at least investigated. The news story says he did that, didn't he? Let's go on to 18 U.S.C. 3. That was 18 U.S.C. 4, where you're obligated, once you see felony, to say... And so, remember, we did that. We say, show cause to the Secretary of Interior, you didn't commit a felony or treason. What happened? The, the, the FBI comes knocking, uh, calling, calling our chairman and wanting him to go talk to him. He wants to tell why he's not going to go threaten the Secretary for felony like that, but we are actually complying with the law. And so you have a word in your mouth about the law. I look at the news, I said, well, the President just did what he had, had to do. And if he didn't, the Democrats could beat him up on that, too. Instead, now the Democrat mind, the, the, lib, the progressive mind says, oh, they've never seen this before done, and, or maybe ever. And I'm telling you, if it's never been done, it's why we're in the state that we're in. And I don't care who the president is if they start wielding the power of accountability. In fact, I, we're in position because we've been doing something. We have the opportunity now to call this out on him now, just like we just did at, on the judicial branch. So, USC 3, let's move down. It's actually in reverse order to my mind. But USC 3 says, the accessory after the fact. Who, anyone who, knowing a felony has been committed by another, receives, relieves, com comforts, or assists the felon in order to hinder the felony apprehension, trial, or punishment. Is you giving up to watching the witness of a crime and letting it continue if you don't? brings you into what's called accessory after the fact. Whoever knowing the offense against the United States has been committed receives re relieves com comforts or assists the offender in order to hinder or prevent his apprehension, trial, or punishment is an accessory after the fact. 
I can read more. There's a little bit more here to read, but I don't have to. You can go find it yourself. So the so where the uh, antagonists to the pre office of president uh, say they've never seen this is only, I think, an admission that the government just doesn't inquire, require accountability, and the first officer to come and do accountability becomes vilified by those that essentially might be criminals or aiding and abetting criminals. So why is this news important to me? Well, I just get acknowledgement that there's somebody in, a, in, a head of, in a, the office of a, the President of the United States having the only authority right now under something, uh, a notice we have before him for equity, enforcement, power, and rights, uh, that he has the decision. I now know he knows about this provision, and he's doing it exactly correct. And we won't know how correct and whether or not it was not warranted until these, his attorney general, his attorney general, another military authority term decides whether or not that's accurate. Trump will not. Upon his determination, he's determined felony. He had to do that in order to be able to advance it to the other person required to look to see whether or not that's happened. And so, again, I want to point out that I, this is notice to us. We can take it the way it is. We can take it as it's filtered through bias. Or we can actually look and say, hey, this is what's going on and look and see in the law, well, it ought to go on. And then I offer, it's not going on enough. And when we move forward on this very same provision, the FBI attacked us. That brings the whole DOJ and the FBI under, under scrutiny. This is a whole other style problem, because the DOJ is the same attorney general, general, general that the, this office of president, president just went and talked to. So, whatever you might hear, it looks like to me, there's a law that says that accountability, once you determine the felonies happen, doesn't mean that you're right, but once you believe that you have the elements, as I tell you to think more now, what's the elements of these felonies, what causes this to be a crime, you're supposed to tell somebody to arrest it. It's right here. And if you're found to not do it, you could be brought into liability as an accessory after the fact as well. And so there's, there's laws here. Uh, who is enforcing them? This guy is doing it maybe for the first time. It happens to look bad because it looks like it is after his, his so-called political enemies, doesn't it? And so what do I do about that? I don't know. I'm looking more. The consistency and the laws that people are using, that they deny to the people. And I'm asking you all to eventually position yourself so that you can show up what it appears to me at this point to be a giant hypocrisy and make evidence that nobody can dispute of the fact, instead of and because of our mere opinions are disregarded. I can tell you that, I can tell you there's no accountability. We look around, we see it, but I can show you the code that's right there now. I can tell you now that an official, by their actions, their deed, explained the very same thing that law was required, and now we're having the question that was never done before. And then I have to ask you, then are you in a country that law prevails? Not the rule of law like that professor wants to see, but the law. The objective basis that guides our conduct, and in this case in official capacities. And if it fails at the top, regardless of whether it's a caucus or not, if it fails at the top, it's failing you. Now my only thing is, are you in a position to out that? And are you there? Now that you've heard this, you should be able to write your letters as well. You're, this is affecting you whether you know that or not. Would you write a letter in, in condemnation to the article or author? Would you write it in support of the official that's uh, working for accountability? Would you start support, writing to the senators and the congressmen that are ruining your life underneath a military authority already that aren't uh, honoring this accountability that was supposed to be there to make it so your life wasn't quite so miserable? Are you defending yourself whatsoever with the proper way? Or are you just complaining uh, hither and yon about all the yon, you know, blah, blah, blah? Are, are, you, are you specific to the thing that needs to be said relative to an authority that these people are supposed to be doing, whether or not you've seen it? I'm, I'm telling you that this acknowledgement that it, these things haven't been done in a long time is why we're in the problem and gives us license to now make it our, that we can now add it to our tools and weapons. And so, just look at a news article. I look at them different. I'm saying, okay, this guy did what the law said. Great. But now I know he knows. Now there's no excuse why he's not doing it for us, the people. 
Now, I, again, that's the president. You can do that. At, there's lots of things in lots of places that you find written right in the code that these people that are in office are supposed to do that they don't. And that's how you catch them. That's exactly how you catch them. So now we go on to state law, and something came up in the news, a notice here, uh, outrage. And it happens to be, interestingly, on a subject matter I covered um, long ago with the DAPL. It uh, correlates to these kinds of things. Now, this is down in Texas, and they're trying to avoid some things. But I tried to explain to people, and in particular the, na the Native Indians there and the people with the nearby reservation, how they were supposed to approach this problem. And I got vilified, and I got lots of people that don't listen to me now. And from that group of people, they wouldn't listen. They w certainly were insulted when I said you're being played for a stalking horse condition. And those that uh, those attorneys that are running your show uh, aren't doing what they I already know should be done. Remember the omission. Look at the omission of what should be done and not be done. You can see the you can see the the, the sigh off the play the the plan to destroy. Uh, they would not adopt it. You know, and then I've also been on record to tell you, if you're going to have, even you have to have the stuff that you want done, you're going to now make a law, because like, it doesn't seem like there's any law. And the whole point is because there's no accountability. Because the laws are there to make accountability, and we're just, we're now hearing some professors saying, oh, this stuff never, accountability hasn't happened for like ever. And Trump comes up and says, well, here, I'm going to, there's a law here. He doesn't state the law. I'm telling you that's, he could use that authority. He didn't have to state it. There's the authority. And he didn't do it himself. He came to a conclusion a felony was being done. The first point he had to do, he can't approach it by not coming to that determination, if I hope you understand that. He has to come to that determination before he can pass it on. And he didn't do anything himself. He stuck it into the due process part now, which I want you to understand is that it's civil authority or military authority. No criminal authority in this country, apparently. Get that? And so we now move into a state. I said, you're going to have to make laws. I'm on record of dealing, I guess, in progressive things, actually Native Indian people's property that was being invaded by progressives, actually, that they don't understand. I got vilified. I lost a lot of people. I understand. Uh, I don't know. I didn't really pay much attention. I'm sad to see a lot of this stuff. But here it is today. I said, you got to put stuff in the law that you're going to do. And so that works for both sides. That we now see outrage as Texas Senate passes unconstitutional bill that would hit pipeline protesters with up to 10 years in prison. Now, this is a completely opinionated title unconstitutional has not been determined. You may feel it's unconstitutional, but no different than the Espionage Act can press up against the freedom of speech, and they're going to do that. You have to go prove the unconstitutionality. You just don't make a claim for it. And so up comes a thing that regurgitates the problem. Uh, in fact, this actually came through the Twitter, and I never got a response to it. Someone tried to vilify what I do behind the woodshed. They, they actually thought I was, I was uh, right of them. And what was interesting is they were apparently MAGA and uh, Trump train and all this. And I was, they thought I was saying stuff right of them, right politically. Well, you, and, and you know I've sued, I'm on, I have a, my name on a lawsuit that sued both parties. So I, I don't know where I'm at relative to that. They're just, they're just felons. They're treason. They're making, they commit treason their members. They did, they admitted to that. So how, where I sit politically, I'm kind of not even on the spectrum, but they looked at my stuff and they thought I'm right, right? Make America Great Again, Trump trained supporter, thought, thought I was right of their position. Shows you how far left that whole condition and thought pattern is. And all I'm speaking to is the law. So that's, people don't in this, in these, in these uh, psyops don't even understand they're left of the law, actually. Now, I, 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 hopefully I respectfully challenged that. And you know, I didn't get any response. And so this is our, again, we're, we get sucked into these psyops really easily. Now, putting the law forward is, is right of any other group, even the most, the more conservative so-called. They're not conservative. And don't forget, Trump was a Democrat, supported the Democrats, and then changed ships and sailed his ship into everyone's life. Again, the, they're, the, they're the same problem. Uh, so, so let's get back to the pipeline. You can't declare unconstitutional. You can feel it is. You have to bring your case. I was explaining back in DAPL, the, the North Dakota stuff, and the Standing Rock, how they were being played and how they were getting wrong. Got, got kind of, I didn't get beat up. They beat themselves up and they left. And they don't want to listen. But here it is now. Now the states are coming down to get you even worse. 
And you say that that's unconstitutional. I'm going to have to present something here for you all. I'm going to read the first paragraph to get us into the point, and then I'm going to have to then remind everybody what's going on here. So that you be careful again not to be brought into the into the the cover this this into the riding the stalking horse, <laughs> a sparking outcry from indigenous tribes and environmental groups. The state Texas State Senate on Monday passed an industry backed industry backed so they claim Republican legislation that would hit pipeline protesters with a third degree felony and up to ten years in prison. Let me offer to you what I was saying back when it just occurred. To, I'm, I'm not going to bring up the DAPL. I'm going to bring back the principle I was operating under. There's procedures underneath all this that I told you how to go through it. In fact, Vin, uh, Vince uh, contributed a bit of information about the aspect of laying the pipeline. And that offered me uh, experience on how that gets done and how it gets done improperly. That uh, allowed me to think about it and offer to you all who are involved with those places that do have pipelines you have the right to impose better security to you. And we found out what Vince was saying, they don't do it quite right, and then they, then you, when the pipeline goes up, they're not liable. You can impose the property owner that will be run down if that's what happens here. You can impose more security, at least, the minimum. You can ensure inspections for proper pipeline placement so that it doesn't harm you. But notwithstanding that, they're making a claim here that this is a, a industry uh, backed. Well, I don't know. This probably is governmental, federal government back. They found some people in Texas to pull this in the front end of that. It might be the industry. But there's a whole. the problem is there's a whole process. What I believe that they're saying in this is if you're not going to go through or you deny the process offered to you and instead go interfere with the projects, we're going to call you a criminal. And it's going to be at this level. And so this could be viewed as a free speech problem. This could be viewed as all kinds of problems. But what... When you see what I was telling you all before, that there's a method of communication, right, wrong, or indifferent at this point, of how it actually works. And I, I told you there's a, enough ways that you could stymie that system in the right ways that weren't being done. Again, the omission to do it right was by the attorneys who want to bring this through and create these, these false issues. Remember here we have in, uh, the indigenous tribes and environmental groups is the problem. Again, this connection. Like all of a sudden, environmental groups is going to save you. No, you're going to do it on your own rights. And you're going to do it irrespective of those environments. In fact, you need to throw them out. And this law appears, and I haven't read it, but it appears to say, if you're going to disregard the process that's already there, and you're going to interfere with what ends up being a national, a national benefit, then you, that's a felony. And it happens to be an energy as well. That's a higher felony, if you will. It's whatever, it's a higher crime relative to the rest of the people in the whole nation. I'm not saying I agree with it or disagree. I'm saying there's a standard by looking at it. So if you want to get involved, I want to warn you away from the fact of thinking, well, this is unconstitutional. That hasn't been tested. Then they say it's industry-based. That's irrelevant. The point is there's a law now, and I'm telling you that you are going to avoid that felony. If you follow, like I told you in DAPL, the process that's there and put your best record forward, that is how you'll avoid this. And then you're also going to avoid having your arm blown off and being sprayed with cold water in the middle of the freezing, which do, did it do anything, actually. I guess some of you in the fight would say yes, but I didn't see it. I, I was sad because I didn't see anybody putting up what they should have been doing. And those that put stuff up did it wrong. And I identified all that for those of you that were in in the indigenous group. You have some some people in there that are defeating you and don't even you don't even know it. Why? Because you didn't go read the rules. I can see the problem all the way from behind the woodshed, and you 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 all you all didn't. And this is coming down because you did it wrong, and now they're going to answer you, and they're going to start it in Texas, and we'll see. Maybe some somebody will be able to argue that's unconstitutional. But when, I think when they throw up against the fact that you are contrary to the whole process offered for you to, for due process, it's not going to stand, and it's against an, a national interest. That's difficult to, to, to prevail against. So it's just a fact, folks, just the way that works. I, I'm not here to embrace any of I want to put people's minds in a better frame to understand what they're up against. One thing came through that was kind of interesting, uh, no moving, because the, the, the environmental groups tied to oil and energy have to do with, again, we're back to that 
you know, sustainable uh, world and sustainable controlled uh, governance and sustainable this and which involves this climate change was an interesting article that popped up in my mind and it kind of goes back and forth and I don't know if I can do this so well on the air because I have to describe something to you. The first the first picture that caught my well the first story that caught my mind was uh, this story called uh, this notice again notice uh, from the Guardian and I, I'm more and more I look at the Guardian they're just a the mouthpiece of government and propaganda and agenda and whatever. Uh, but that's okay. You look inside to what they're doing uh, to find out more of the truth. Why the Guardian is changing again? They're focusing, fo focusing uh, on their on their language, and they're changing again the language it uses about the environment. Now let's get back to that pipeline. If you've got environmental groups that are having to change their language as they go, that's not very foundational. If, if you have a right to protect, I'll just tell you that right now. But getting to this story, why the Guardian is changing the language it uses about the environment. Uh, for now, house style guides, house style guides, and remember when you get into court, there's style guides, and when you get into government and property, uh, I mean, in the statutes, it's all style guides, so you've got to pay attention to all that too, for those of you who have never heard that. Very interesting and very fascinating. Again, a lot more study. Uh, but for now, house style guide recommends terms like climate crisis and global heating. So that got, you know, global heating was just a laugh. I just, anyway, so this is all ridiculous. It's all fraud you ever heard me talk about. But what caught my mind was I see the picture they showed. Uh, was a bunch of polar bears all huddled together, all milling around, and you look at a bunch of trash heaps. So you read the description. It says, the destruction of the Arctic ecosystems forces animals to search for food on land, such as these polar bears in northern Russia. The destruction of Arctic ecosystems forces animals to search for food on land, such as these polar bears in northern Russia. And there's a ton of bear, I don't know, like a dozen and a half bears, I don't know. Babies, all piled together, looking over the garbage, right? Then I read this story. Rotting trash piles sky high in L.A., attracting rats and raising concerns of a new epidemic. They didn't say pandemic, did they? No, because it's not, they can tell you, it's not, not a virus, that the, uh, a, a doctor that transmits DNA between two regions. So it's an epidemic. Rat-infested piles of rotting garbage left uncollected by the city of Los Angeles, even after promises to clean it up, are fueling concerns about a new uh, epidemic after last year's record number of flea-borne typhus cases. They go down and they also say that this is caused by climate change. And I want to go back to that picture of those bears. You go back, you push those picture down, and you make those bears really small in the picture relative to the garbage heap they're standing on. They started looking like rats to me. Now, how is it? What is it that's actually causing a conglomeration of animals in a place of a garbage pile? Easy pickings, folks. What, what animal would, would want to go run down an elk when they can go to their garbage pile that people live? It's both blamed on climate change. But, you know, those, those bears look just like rats. In, the, in a Russian garbage pile, as the rats looked like in the pile in the streets of L.A. That I, again, I just, the, that they, these stories come together, they're both blaming climate change, and what it is has nothing to do, the conglomerations of animals eating easy pickings food it cannot be based on any of this nonsense, that it doesn't matter what the climate, uh, what the Guardian changes their, their, their terminology to, it's an evasion of the truth. It's a fraud, and they'll use everything to try and make you think, oh, there's no uh, ecosystem. No, oh, there's an easy pickings garbage pile. How many times, how many stories have you had the bears go to the garbage cans? How many times have you gone to the to the paper, uh, to, this, to the nation, and, and figured out they, that they don't want you to keep your, your stuff in your tent because they'll eat your tent? Thank you for being uh, here today, this week. Uh, Grimmer, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. And Jules over there at uh, ucy.tv, thank you for your support and simulcast. I do appreciate that. I uh, hope something I said encouraged you to do. Choose that one thing and move forward, folks. That's when it starts for you. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast. This is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs> 